Welcome back aliens, I'm Navin Reddy from Thais Call Learnings and in this video we'll talk about higher order function. Now what exactly higher order function means? Now if you talk about Java language or if you talk about any object oriented programming language, we always give importance to variables, right? Because variables is something which you can create where you can pass the pass to different methods. Example, if you have multiple methods and all this method want to communicate, so one way you can do that is by passing values. Right? So variables and objects are your primary thing. What about functions? So function we always use to call it, right? We call functions, we create functions, but we cannot call a function in a function. But in, in functional programming, this, wall, uh, this is what is happening. We pass a function in a function. Uh, I know that that sounds weird for you because if you are not familiar with functional programming, this looks weird, but then trust me. In functional programming, your functions are the first class members, which means you can treat functions as you treat variables. You can pass a function to a function, you can define a function inside a function, you can do all those weird stuff. Let's try it out. Now to make you understand how functional programming looks like, we'll go for a very simple example. Let's not get into the complex structure. Now assuming that you are coming from object-oriented programming, it will be difficult to get into functional programming in one go. It needs certain uh, levels of practice to understand how it works. It's not just about syntax, it's also about how you think about programming. Because if you have worked on Java before, the way you think is in object only because th this is how your brain is molded by Java language. So what we will do here is, we will print this value. So I want to print the values of these values. I want to print all the values inside these values. Now the way you can do that is by using a for loop, right? And we have seen that. The way you can use a for loop is by saying a for and then you can say i in values and then you can print individual values for i. This is what we do, right? And we have done that before. But still, let's try to run this code and let's see what happens. The moment you run this code, you can see we got all the same values. Now, whatever value we have in the list, we got 4, 8, 3, 9, 2, 1. Now, if you talk about this for loop, this is something called as external for loop, which means the for loop here is not a part of list, it's a part of Kotlin and some feature of Kotlin is trying to fetch the, the, the it is trying to fetch the values of a list. Now list says, hey, why you have to use some other members? Why you have to use some other feature? So instead of using a external for loop, what Kotlin says is you can say values dot, there is a method called as for each. Now you can call it as method or a function. Uh, let's go for for each. Now this for each says, okay, you can print all the values. So what is my job here is, so for each says, my job here is to fetch one by one value of the list. Now I will give you one one value. As a programmer, you define what you want to do. So remember for each says, I will give you one by one value. It's depend upon you what you want to do it, do it, I mean, do what it with it. What I will do is I will use a very simple syntax here. I will simply say print ln and it will print it. Okay. And if you run this code, you can see it prints the same thing which is printed by your normal for loop. Let me just remove this normal for loop just to get the output which you can actually see what's happening. And you can see if I run this code, you got the same output. Uh, okay. Now you are thinking what the hell is this, right? How can we write something in this syntax? Now there are two things which are weird here. The first thing is this for each is a method or a function and we are passing a function to a function. That is weird, right? Because we have not done this before. I mean, how can you pass a function to a function? And that's the beauty about uh, this functional programming. So Kotlin does support functional programming and here you can pass a function inside a function. So we are passing a print element function inside for each. That was the weird thing. The second weird thing is, what is this it? That sounds weird, right? So what I will do is just to make you understand how exactly this thing works, let me just go to the detailing of it. So for, first of all, before continuing with this, uh, remember, whenever you want to print the values from, for, uh, from the collection or the list, you can use a for each and you can print all the values. It's just that you have to mention because for each says, Hey, 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 programmer, 
my job here is to fetch one by one value. So as a programmer, you're saying, okay, you give me one, one, one by one value. What I will do is I will print the value which you give me. So your for each gives you the value in it and you're just printing it. But just to make you understand how exactly this thing works or from where it is derived, because to understand it better, you have to understand how it is derived. So what I will do is I will cut this part and let's try to understand how exactly it works. So I will say control space. The moment I say control space, can you see that this for each function actually wants an object of consumer. Now what is what exactly consumer is? Now consumer basically if I click, if I click on consumer, so consumer is an interface. Again, it is fetched from Java 8. Uh, so this is a Java 8 part consumer interface. So consumer is an interface in Java. So what you will do is instead of writing this stuff here, I will go up somewhere here. I will say, let me create an object of consumer and let's name. Okay. Now how do we, the way you can get object is by saying var. Uh, you will say var uh, con. Okay. So we'll say var con and okay. So we'll say var con colon. We'll mention the type of it. We'll say consumer and this takes a integer value. So this con consumer object. So this is a consumer object for us. It takes an integer value. And now question arise, consumer is an interface, right? How can we create object of that? Now in one of the video, we have talked about this. If you want to create an object of an interface, you have to use a anonymous inner class concept. The way you can do that is by saying object keyword. So you want an object of consumer. So we have to say object of, so that's colon, object of consumer, which takes a integer, but it says, okay, if you want to do that, you have to define the function it. So if I open the curly package and close, this is where you have to define the function, which is the inside consumer. Now, I don't know which, which method we have there. So actually you don't have to remember that. What you can do is if I go here, you can see it will give you an option of implementing members. So whatever method, which I declare that you can, do, you can implement those methods and you can see the method name is accept, which takes a integer value and it returns unit. Now unit is same as void in Java. So in Java in C, we use void in Kotlin. We use unit. I will click on. Okay. We got our implementation here. So you can see the method. It says override fun, except that's the method we have. It takes a parameter, which is T. What I will do is whatever value you're getting, just print. So I will print the value of T. So remember this, uh, I'm creating an object of consumer. I'm creating a method called as except, which takes a integer parameter and I'm printing that value, nothing else. And whatever consumer object you have, which is con, will pass that object inside for each. So inside this for each, I'm passing an object of consumer. That's what it wanted, right? If you remember, when we talked about for each, it is asking you for the object of consumer. Let's try it out. Uh, so I will go back and run this code. Okay, let me just verify this. Okay, okay. So you can see we got all the values. You can see we got four, eight, three, nine, two, one, right? So basically, this for it actually wants an object of consumer, which we are passing it here. Now the thing is, this looks cool, right? This looks good. But then there is a concept of boilerplate code. What it means is, see, on the left hand side, when you know that the object is of consumer, then why on the right hand side we have to mention that is a consumer? I mean, once you know that we are getting object of consumer, why to mention that we are getting object of consumer on the right hand side as well? Why you have to define the method which is accept? Because if I go to consumer interface, this consumer interface has only one method which is declared. You can see we have only one method declared here, which is accept. So what you can do is you don't have to mention all this thing here. You don't have to mention this stuff from here to here. So this is, this is something it is, which is optional, right? So the important thing here is only this T and this print LN. So what you can do is you can just go back here instead of your, instead of using con, you can say, Hey, I have a value, which is T. So whatever value you give me, I will put that, I will put that value in T and I will just print that value T. Let me repeat, instead of passing an object of con, instead of doing all this weird stuff, for each says, I will give you a value, right? So that value, that particular value will go inside T and that T will be printed here. So this is the parameter which you're passing. So in the accept method, the parameter which you're passing is this one T. Again, it's not compulsory to use T. We can also use N. 
that's our choice actually we can use any variable name so whatever value this for each gives you that value will be going in n and that n value we are printing here so we don't need actually con object we don't need all this stuff and that's why i said you don't have to remember about something anything about consumer so i'm just printing this for each i'm fetching that value n and then i'm printing it if i run this code you can see it should work and you got all the values here you can see in the output window we got all the values that's that sounds cool right but then why to even mention this n that that looks awkward i mean that, why to even mention this n what we'll do is we'll remove all this thing if you don't mention any variable name that's what you're saying right i don't know what this n is if you don't know the variable names you can also use it it means that particular value so if you don't mention any variable name by default it will go into it variable right so it is already there in kotlin you just have to use it so you can see if i go to it it says whatever value you you, you will get you will you, it will print it here and let's run this code and okay waiting for the output you got the output so this is how it works so what we are doing here is we are passing a function inside a function in fact why do you even mention this id you know that that looks weird why do you even mention this id uh, it uh, let me just verify if this work uh, if this thing works i don't want to mention any variable name i just want to mention a function is it possible let's try with two colons okay can you see that even this thing works let's run this code and oh it works can you see that it works so what exactly this thing here now again uh, now i know you what you're thinking you are thinking this is this is okay now i, I know there are two reactions one it's weird second it's awesome now it's actually awesome what you're doing is before we are we are passing n and then that n is printed then you are said okay you don't want to mention the variable name you can simply use it but then why to even mention the variable why to even mention that thing what we are saying is hey for each for each will say you will get the values we just have to print those values inside print ln so what we are passing is behavior so whatever value i will pass do whatever you want so as a programmer you are saying hey my intention here is to print it so print ln will take that value from for each and it will print it's just that you have to mention that this is a method reference now why you're using these two colons uh, we, okay we'll talk about that in some time so what we are doing is we are referring a method here uh, you can call them as function reference as well so you're saying whatever value you get from for each the value will be automatically get gen get saved inside println. So automatically you will pass the value from forish to println. So whatever value forish will give you, that value will go to println. But then what is this double double quotes here? Uh, it's just that it is possible that your method is or your function is there in some inside some class. So if you want to refer for which class it belongs to, you can refer that class name here. So you can mention the class name. You can mention the class name colon colon you can mention the method name or function name so that's the beauty about method reference or function reference in kotlin so yeah that's that's how the higher order function works it's, it's actually a beauty thing uh, i would recommend you to practice this more because this is something which is difficult to understand so if you have not understood from this video what you can do is just try it by yourself you will get some idea about it and the more you practice you will get the idea more clear remember the only thing is this is a new concept this is not a this is not actually a programming concept it's a, this is not a syntactical thing this is a programming thing you know we are changing the way we think initially we used to think in uh, object world now you have to think in functional world that's the only difference you have so that's it from this video guys if you liked it click on the like button and do subscribe for further videos